Hello everyone, it's Amy, and welcome back for week 46 of the new Builder Stash and Craft. We've got a super easy one today. Everything that we need, we've already have in our stash. Today we're going to make Christmas tags. You know, just the little to and from tags. We'll make our own stamps so that we can make a lot of them quickly. And I'll show you how to make 3D stamps. And um, those are, I think that these are really fun to make. And so just different different types of stamps for our packages for the Christmas time. Um, and so I am going to just, I'll just take the whole thing and just set it aside. I'm going to set this aside. This may be a really quick video today. I am fighting with a toothache that is not very nice. It's really kicking my behind. So, but, so the first thing, let me see, I had some bits here okay so in order to make this stamp that i made all i did was i took a piece of regular copy paper folded it in half and then i just cut half of the shape so it would be approximately um symmetrical it doesn't have to be perfect and but i'm no good at trying to do one side and then the other they wind up way off um and so that is how i did that one and for the star, I just went ahead and did the typical, you know, draw the star like that. And then I traced it onto my fun foam so it wouldn't have those extra lines. And that is how I wound up with the star. And this wound up being um, very, like, asymmetrical. I like stars that look like that, so that did not bother me. And then, let's see, the Christmas tree... And for the Christmas tree, again, I just, this one, I just folded my fun foam in half and then went around. And that didn't work very good folding the fun foam in half. That's why I decided for this one, Kitty, what's going on? Um, Kitty doesn't come in here very often. Um, so that's why I decided to do the paper for this, because it's easier to fold your paper in half Get the shape you want and then trace it out than to try and do your fun foam because you fold it and you're trying not to put a big fold in it. You know, you don't want to make that crease. And so and then the fun foam's kind of shifting. So it's easier to do it with a piece of paper. So um, the only one that I haven't done yet um, that I kind of thought I would want to do is a just a regular Christmas bulb. And so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to press down on this. This is just a little bowl, and so that I have a nice circle to draw around. Now, the uh, the thing is, is that you do want to make sure um, that whatever you're making, it's big enough to put your to and from on. And other than that, there are no rules. So I need to decide if I want to put a top on this or if I want to add it later. And maybe I'll go ahead and do it right now. That would, I think, be easier than trying to do it later. So I'm just going to cut up, give it a little bit of a round, and then cut back down again. There we go. And they don't need to be perfect. So you just get it as whatever is good enough for you. A little point right there. And I think I want to, I think I'll do it this way. I want this to be kind of rounded like the other side. There. So there we go. So that's our Christmas bubble. Now you can leave it like that so that you can decorate it in different ways. Or you can do like this one here where I went ahead and I pressed the little swoosh in the middle. So that will always be on there. If we leave it like this, we can decide if we want that on there or not. For the top portion, this is a pen that doesn't write. And you can press down into your fun foam. Give it a good press so that you actually get a line where you want it to 
where you want it to be. And what that does, let's see, where is the, here it is. So with this Christmas bauble, I pressed the lines here and here, and that is what made the, the gaps where the yellow is, because that yeah, where the yellow is was white. So if that makes sense. And I apologize if it seems like I'm kind of hurrying, but I kind of am, because I really did want to get this done today since Christmas is coming, and I really like to have little tags on the Christmas presents, so I figured if you do that too and you didn't get out to get any, this is a perfect way to do it. Plus, it really is a fun way to do it. Now, normally what I would actually do is I would do these with a, a paint pad. You know, the pads that we got like this, you get them you get them wet, squeeze them out as hard as you can. It's just got that little bit of foam in there. And then I would put spots of different colors of paint so that I could use that with my stamp. I'm not going to do that tonight because I don't want to have to deal with cleaning that. And um, so I am just going to use the markers like I've showed you how to do also. And that's a quick way if you're just going to do a little bit of something. Um, that's a quick way to do it. So this is just a piece of scrap cardboard and oh, it's just barely going to fit, but it will fit on there. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue. I like the tacky glue for the stamps. If I can get the, there we go, get the top off of it and make sure that I put it on the back side. I think I am going to leave this bobble just plain. I'm not going to put any dents in it because that way I can do it however I want to do it later. Uh, here it is. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that tooth, but I just was at the dentist last Wednesday and it started bothering me on Friday. So I think it got infected or maybe like one next to it or something um, is bothering me. Not necessarily that one. We'll have to wait and see. But they couldn't get me in today. They did call in antibiotics. And so I'm hoping that those will really start to take effect. Ibuprofen and Tylenol do not seem to be helping much at all. And so a little bit of salt water helps a little bit. But I really just wanted to get this one done because I really do like, I love making my own stamps. I mean, it's just my thing. I just really like doing it. But, uh, and if you don't want, you know, if you have some Christmas stamps or you don't want to make your own and you have some, um, stamp those on a piece of paper and just make them little rectangles or circles around them. You could cut out little baubles and um, go ahead and, and stamp little Christmas things on top of that. So, you know, it's just, it's fun to make your own. And when you make your own, people know you made your own. And I really like that. I really like it when I get something that's, you know, made by my kids or my family or whatever. Um, I really like it that it's handmade. I don't, you know, store-bought is not always best. So there we go. Now we have a bobble. And we've got these others too. So we'll just grab some cardstock and our watercolor markers. You don't want to use permanent markers because that won't work for this. Okay, they will work to outline them if you want to go around the edges. I do do that just to take the white off the edges so you can't really see it but you can notice it if it's not there um, and you can use your darker permanent markers for that if you want to so let's take this bobble and let's let's do purple and blue since I've got some oranges and reds already and do I want to make it let's do this and make this purple. Okay. 
and it doesn't have to be perfect. But you will see if there's lines, you will see those lines. I'm going to do that and I'm going to do it up here too. And then because I don't have silver, we'll make that top part black. But we'll try and make it so that it isn't a super dark black. Okay, let's put some blue in the middle. Okay, now, when you're done with this, you can do one of two things. You can breathe on it to just make it a little bit damp, and that will help your color to transfer. Or you can spray a little mist of water on it, and that will make it look like a watercolor. And both of them are nice. The If you breathe on it, it will be more of a solid color. And if you spritz it with the water, it will be more watercolor looking. So we're going to do the, the top part in black. But because I don't want it to be super black, because I really want it to be silver and I don't have silver, I'm just going to take a little piece of scrap paper, if I can find one. Um, here we go. And just pick a little bit of that off so it's not so dark. And I think we'll go ahead and we'll just spritz this with um, some water, just a little spritz of water. Maybe two spritzes because this is very fine. I'm going to turn it over and stamp it on our cardstock. Now to make the... Um, The 3D ones, um, you need two that kind of match. The the one in the the one that you don't like the most is the one you put on the bottom. So because the one on the bottom doesn't show much, but you don't want it to just be like plain white because that would be noticeable. And purple on here. My watercolors are starting to get low. Of course, we've had them for quite a while, so I think that I am going to need to get some more watercolor markers. So we'll figure that out in a couple of weeks. We'll use some of our money to replenish whatever it is, because everybody will be out of different things. Um, and so we'll just take some of our savings and we'll apply it towards whatever it is we're out of. Okay, so a little bit of black here. And take a little bit of that off. Give it a spritz. And then just give it a nice little press. And I'm going to try and spritz this again and see. I'm going to see if it actually, I don't think it will come off again. If you're using paint, oh, if you're using paint, you can usually get two or three different, um, you can get your original and then a couple stamp offs. But with the markers, a lot of times you don't actually get the second one. Oh, but that looks really cool. I like the looks of that. wonder if I can even get one more. Not much. Okay. I better get the... They're already starting to... Well, actually, they're not really drying up. I think they're starting to run out because I have used them so much but they have lasted very well and for a very long time I don't know what I did with the top to the purple one it's going to have to wait alrighty so then all you're going to do is cut them out and you can use them just like this as a tag or you can make them into a 3D tag or I guess maybe you'd call that a 2D tag because it's two layers. You can put as many layers on top as you want to. And actually, you can even 
um, do like decoupage layers, which is where you kind of um, you don't do the whole thing. Maybe I could show you that here. It's not going to necessarily work the best with this, but you'll get the idea. So with decoupage, you build it up. So maybe your bottom one will be solid and the next one may only be oh let's see I'm having a hard time thinking straight today um okay so like you have your bottom one and then your next one might just be maybe just these two pieces and that would be like a certain height. And then the next one would be even less pieces. And I, I'm not going to show you that today because this is not, this would not be a good example. What you do is if you've got a picture where you definitely have something that's in the background and something that's in the foreground, you put the whole thing down and then you cut parts of it off, off each layer as you're getting closer and closer. So by the time that you get to whatever your top layer is, it's whatever is the most in the foreground in that picture. And that would be your very top layer. And that's 3D decoupage. And I'm not gonna cut that one out. Okay, so, but in order to layer up, which one do I like the best? I really do like this one. I think I'll keep this one out. I'll put this one on the bottom and this one on the top. Now this one, I'm missing a little bit of that gray right here on the edge because there was only just a little bit. So that's okay because I'm going to put a little yellow on there. Or maybe I'll put a little gold on the top. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do before you do any kind of layering or anything is put your to and from on the back so that... You don't have to do it on a layered up, you know, because you want to let that dry. So we're going to layer those two. So I'm just going to come in here. Put two. From. And go around the edges to make sure that you don't have the white edges. So we'll just got the blue here. And here. And then we've got the purple. And the black. And you're going to want to do that on all of them. And then I want to put some sparkle on here. So let me just do these up because I don't want to layer them if they have not been edged because it's easier to do it when they're nice and flat on your table. And it may not seem like it does make a difference, but it really does. So there we go. Okay, now they all have edges on it. And I do like to use the yellow on these ones. Just kind of go in there and since a lot of times those are silver or gold, I like to do that. And then I'm going to show you how to make something that you can glitter them up with. We bought the mica powder, which was the eyeshadow quite a long time ago. And then we never used it. 
So today we are going to use it. I'm going to show you how to get it open because it is hard to get open. So take your pokey tool, which we had the screwdrivers that we bought. Take your pokey tool and stick it not at the very edge because at the very edge, the plastic is thicker. So you're going to come in just a little bit. You don't want to go in the middle either because in the middle you have no leverage. So you want to go close to the side, but but there's a lip of of heavy plastic that helps hold this in. So you want to come in just a little bit, maybe an eighth quarter of an inch or something. You just don't want to be in the middle and you don't want to be on the edge. So then you just take your pokey tool and you just press it down on there and it takes a little while. So I did it before I came out, but you're just going to take it and basically you're just going to go back and forth and back and forth. Now, if you have a drill or if your husband or somebody that you know has a drill, you can just drill a little hole in there. Once you get the hole in there, then you're going to take your pokey tool and stick it in that hole and then just hold on to it a little bit and just lean your pokey tool back and it pops that top right off. When you are done, you can pop this top right back on there again too and it will pop it'll pop on and kind of, you know, lock and stay there. So then what we're going to do, I'm going to use this little bowl and we're just going to take a little bit of this mica powder. And again, like I said, this is eyeshadow. If you can't get the loose eyeshadow at the Dollar Tree, and that was, I don't need to make that much, but I have. So I'm just going to take this. Um, you know, you can use any sparkly eyeshadow. Um, and then if you got the kind that's like in the, I don't know what they call those, little pads or whatever, um, you can crush that. And if it's got the sparkle in it, um, you can crush that and use it for your sparkle powder. Now I'm going to put a little bit of glue with this. And normally I would not have this much, but I did just put in a little bit too much. But if I had a little, oh, no. Okay, about equal parts. Um, if I had a little Loctite container, that would be better because then I could put it in there and keep it in there. But since I don't have that, I will probably, when we're all done here, I will probably just paint this onto a, a piece of paper or something. But you're just going to pick up all that mica powder right into that glue. And if you have the white mica powder, um, I think it's called Snow White, um, that gives you the sparkle kind of like the wink of Stella, the clear wink of Stella. Um, you just mix that in with your regular school glue, Elmer's glue, whatever. Thin glue works best, really. We could even put a few drops of water in here to thin it down if it was too thick. And then all you're gonna do is use a little paintbrush and so let's see that one. So this one I'm just gonna leave like it is, but let's put a little gold on our cap. And again, this is about 50-50. So you get a nice see-through. You really get the glitter there, but, but you also can see through it. And the more that it dries, the more you will see that mica powder. But can you see that shine? It really does shine nicely. And then you can even use it to, you know, go ahead and just, let's say maybe we'll put, let's put some little, sparkle drops on here and if you just let them dry they'll be a little bit puffy not much this glue settles pretty well but it'll have a little texture to it and it'll have a really nice sparkle because to me Christmas is sparkle And there we go. That looks really cute. Let it dry, you'll have your to and from. So let's see, which one am I gonna put? I think I'm gonna put this one on top. So I will go ahead and paint this one. Maybe 
maybe I will just put a line on here to make it a little different. You could even do this. This is just our cardstock for the tags, but you could make these and let the kids stamp them on cardboard and decorate them and um, and make little Christmas ornaments that they could give away to grandma and grandpa or aunt and uncle or brother and sister for Christmas. I know our kids used to do that. I still have them on my tree from nieces and nephews that they had bought like painting kits, little wooden cutouts, and they painted them and gave them to us for Christmas. And they're so fun. So there we go. Now this one is going to be on the bottom, so I'm not going to bother to put any glitter on it, but I do need to put the to and from on the back. And because we want this to be puffy, we're going to go ahead and we will use our caulk and we will put a bead of caulk in a few places. You just want them to all be about the same. So put one there. You don't want it too close to the edge because you don't want it to accidentally squish out. And then we're going to take this one and just line it up. They do not have to be perfectly cut out because we cut them out separately, remember? And that's just what makes them look even more homemade if they're not absolutely perfect. It also helps you really see the, the layers, the fact that it's layered. So don't worry if it's not totally perfect, the top and the bottom when you go to line them up. I am just checking to make sure that I have those about the same height. And because this paper was wet, it's kind of curling this way. Wait till your caulk dries. And um, then I can go ahead and bend that little bit, you know, back a little closer. But don't you don't want to squish everything too much while your caulk is still wet. It doesn't take a real long time to dry. And once it's dry, it holds it out there nicely. It doesn't squish because it dries real solid. So there we go. And that's how you do those. And then you could even see in these two, these two are the, the 2D, 3D, whatever. And see, you can push on that pretty good. And I haven't, these have been drying for probably about an hour maybe an hour and a half. So they haven't been, by tomorrow morning, they will be completely solid. But we'll go ahead and use some of our glitter on here. And maybe even, because it just, it just touches it off to put a little bit of this on here. It just makes it look a little more finished. And again, you can take much more time in doing it. It's really quite a nice thing to just sit and you have your stamps and then just go ahead and use your um, paint pad. Put out the colors you want to use of paint on your paint pad and just sit at your crafting table and just take a whole sheet of 8 by 10 cardstock. And just take a whole sheet and just sit there and stamp a bunch of trees and stamp a bunch of ornaments. And um, and it just, it's really fun to just sit there and color them in and decorate them. And put a little bit of sparkle. You could put glitter on them. You could put, depending on, I didn't make these real large. I could have made them larger than I did. Um, 
you know, to be tags, but they don't have to be large. But I was forgetting what, oh, yeah, you could use some little bits of bling to put your ornaments on there. I think this tree's a little bit small to put the bling that I have on it, because my bling's quite a bit bigger than that. And maybe just a little sparkle at the top of the tree. Maybe even a little bit on the inside tree, too. And the blue balls are really quite dark. So if I color over top of those, it will lighten them up a bit. Kind of push it back and make everything blend together a little bit more. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And there we go. And that will sparkle even more when it's dry. And then it's just fun to just have your plain little tags. Just to and from tags, put a piece of tape on them and you've got them. And I just think that it's just nice to have on your packages. I think it's nice when they're homemade. And there's a lot of times that I like, I like to do this because I'll get almost done doing all of my wrapping and tagging and realize that um, I ran out of tags. So it's always good to have just a few sitting there ready to go. So, sorry for such a short and kind of all over the place video, but I just wanted to make sure that I got here and I wanted to do these before Christmas came. Give you a little bit of time to make a few. And like I said, they're, they're so easy to make. Just so easy to make. Here's the Christmas tree. Uh, oh, here's the Christmas tree. So, and then to do the little swooshes in the Christmas tree, I just used uh, the pen that doesn't work and just pushed back the fun foam like that so that when you used it, it left those areas white. And then you can color the area. Like here, I colored it with yellow, but that where that yellow was, that was white. So, because wherever you push it back, it does not show up. But, and these are probably a better size to do your to and from on than these smaller ones, but sometimes if you have a very small package, it's nice to have a small ornament also, or I mean a small tag. So thank you very much for stopping by. If you get a chance, watch a commercial once in a while. That does help me. Tell your friends I'm back. And I really appreciate each appreciate each and every one of you waiting for me and being there for me and letting me know that you missed me because I missed being here and it does really feel good to be back and it's because of all of you you know just being there and supportive I really do appreciate that so thank you very much for stopping by and I hope that all of you have an outstanding day bye-bye